Good morning and welcome back. We are on day 334 of our 365 day tr uh, trip through the scriptures and we are continuing to look at some stories that are unique to St. Luke's Gospel and aren't found anywhere else. Here is one of the most famous of these. It's in Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32 if you want to look it up in your own Bible and I'm just about to read to you my translation of it uh, as we turn you around and look at the screen. And Jesus said there was this man who had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the property that is coming to me. So he divided the living between them, and not many days afterwards, having gathered it all together, the younger son went away to a distant land, and there he wasted his property, living a stupidly ruinous life. But uh, when he had spent it all up, there arose a severe famine throughout that land, and he began to be in need. And he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that land, who sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. And he was longing to fill his belly with the husks that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But, he, but when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have more than enough bread, and I'm perishing of hunger? I will get up and go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in front of you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Take me on as one of your hired hands. And he got up and set off towards his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion, and ran and hugged him tightly and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in front of you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and get him dressed, and bring a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet, and bring the fattened calf for slaughter, and let's eat and be merry, because my son here was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and has been found, and they began to celebrate. But his elder son was in a field, and as he was coming closer and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called over one of the boys and asked what was going on. And he said to him, Your brother has come back, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. But he was angry, and was not willing to go in. So his father went out, and had a serious word with him. But he answered his father back, Look, I've served you for all these years, and I've never once disobeyed your orders, and you never gave me even a kid so that I could have a party with my friends. But when this son of yours came home, who consumed all your life's work with harlots, you had the fattened calf slaughtered for him. But he said to him, Son, you are with me all the time, and everything I own is also yours. But it was right that we should be glad and celebrate, because your brother here was dead and is alive again. He was lost and has been found. Well, back on day 264, we looked at this parable in its Jewish context. Now we are looking at it as a unique part of Luke's special stash of stories that he only records. It may have been circulating amongst the preaching materials in the Gentile churches, founded largely by St Paul. We know Paul's distinctive take on the Gospel, that he taught his hearers that perfection was not possible for humans on their own, and that therefore the only hope for salvation was not in our human efforts, but in God's love and mercy. The son that leaves home then can be compared to those who have, by the end, come to experience and believe uh, in that love and mercy and have experienced the consequences of their mistakes and they've come home looking just for a morsel of mercy 
only to receive love and a welcome far beyond their expectations. Former pagans had been under the impression that they should not displease their gods, and the Jews, of course, were obsessed with uh, keeping the law of Moses in detail for similar reasons. The Father's generous welcome is the good news in this parable, since the Father represents God and the penitent returnee represents the recent converts to the faith. Now, on the face of it, the stay-at-home brother represents the Jewish followers of the scribes and Pharisees, saying, look, I've served you for all these years and I've never disobeyed your orders. But this has come into the gospel through a Gentile route. So we should look for a deeper answer. You don't need to be Jewish to be like this elder brother, resenting what looks like an unjust favour given to his younger brother. He lets his resentment get hold of him. What he says amounts to, just look how many years I've slaved for you. He's persuaded himself to be proud of his rectitude and all the work he's put in. And he disowns his brother, calling him this son of yours. But this does not change the father's attitude. He won't be forced to choose between his sons. For all their shortcomings, he loves them both and never stops treating them as his children, whatever they've done or not done. When he rebukes the stay-at-home brother for his resentment, he does so very gently. His stay-at-home son is dear to him. He has stayed with his father all along after all. He should have understood his father better and shared his joy when his little brother came home. Now, Luke does not have an ending to this story. He doesn't know whether the elder brother comes round and is persuaded to drink his brother's health at the welcome home party. This is a parable that applies to all of us when we jump to hasty judgment of others and refuse to love and forgive when we have the opportunity to do so. As Jesus says in another place, quoted by Matthew and Luke together from their common source that we call Q, do not judge others, and you yourself will not be judged. That's in Matthew chapter 7 and Luke chapter 6. Fairness is definitely a point of contention for those reading Luke's Gospel, as we shall see again tomorrow. In the parable of the unfair steward. I look forward to seeing you then.